Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. When it comes to your branding as a coach, consultant, or small business owner, absolutely everything matters. Today, we're going to be talking about how to optimize your branding. Now, I understand as a coach, consultant, or business owner, your mission and your goal is to get more clients and customers and generate more revenue and grow your online business. And I assume that's the reason why you pay attention to our podcast and you have subscribed. And if you haven't, please do so. And I believe that's why you're listening to a, a podcast so you can uh, obviously generate more revenue and grow your business. And you obviously want to achieve that for your business. But how are you going to achieve that in a sea of me to uh, consultants or coaches out there? You want to do that by optimizing your branding. Now, a very important aspect of branding is where you're actually doing it, okay? Um, if you've been listening to our stuff, I'm very bullish and big on constantly identifying your target market and clarifying your message and then determining what media you're going to reach out, um, you know, that target audience with that clarified message. And you want to make sure that you're absolutely everywhere where your customers uh, might be able to find you because our jobs is to make sure that every person that we can help has a happier existence and what good are we going to be if we're going to be the world's biggest or you know biggest secret you know so like i said a very important aspect of your branding is where you're going to be doing it and you should be absolutely everywhere that you possibly can and branding is actually that opportunity where you can put a stake in the ground that puts your business in the hearts and minds of your customers. And the more you are putting value out there, then obviously you're making the world a better place in, in whatever it is that you're doing. So um, a lot of service business owners or coaches that we deal with, they actually think that getting clients or growing their business is hard. But if you actually optimize your brand, you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And the more you can get your brand right in between their eyes and in between their hands where their heart is in a way that matters, the more customers you can engage with and you can actually build loyalty and develop a deeper relationship um, with the people that are going to be paying you money in the future. And I want you to understand why you really need to uh, sit back and, and listen to this podcast. And, and just once you do do that and you do it right, you'll have people, um, you know, screaming, stumbling and falling, bidding a path to your proverbial online door. Okay. Wanting you to um, help you be to help them be do and have a, biz, um, a life that's worth living or whatever it is that you're providing them. But however, before we jump into that, it's very important to understand that this is actually much more involved than having your colors right or, you know, pasting your logo everywhere. And it's much more complex than just using your. Uh, graphic designer, uncle, sister, or brother, or yourself, or Canva, or somebody from Fiverr to just come up together with a brand color palette, typeface, and a tagline, and hope that people are just going to uh, get it and understand what it is that you're doing. Branding is much more than that. And um, 
what you find is, um, you know, in some brand standards or people that create brand manuals, it's a multifaceted uh, endeavor. You're not just putting words and colors and pictures together. It is actually a combination of both the tangible and intangible things that actually add up to your story and whatever promise that you are telling your audience because your life story and your life um, experience have much more value to your audience than you just regurgitating facts and opinions um, you know out there so your brand is basically your story your origin story and pretty much the promise on how you're going to deliver on that story based on how you, um, you know, have made sense of the world around yourself. So if you really want to succeed, especially in the online space, just look at yourself right now. What are you actually embarrassed with or what are you struggling with that you and what are you doing about it? Those are the stories. Those are the experiences that your audience is looking to uh, get, not a, you know, a quote from a book by Tony Robbins or something of that nature, because powerful branding is in its broadest sense is just having a brand story. And when you're using your brands, you know, aesthetic elements, um, you know, like your logo and the colors, that's just one piece of the narrative that is helping you tell the story about your values and why anybody should pay attention to you. All right. So without further ado, let's just uh, dive into this and really make sure that we're going to leave you um, better than we found you. And also that you'll be able to start attracting your dream clients on repeat using our step-by-step -step digital marketing strategies. And one of them, which is optimizing your brand. Now, I know you've read books. That's the reason why you're a coach or a consultant. And a lot has been written about the importance of brands having a story. And maybe you are caught in between, should I grow a personal brand or should I grow a business brand? And obviously, you've read all of this stuff and um, the decision is going to be yours. And I know you should also um, read every word uh, that has to talk about, you know, branding. Because having your own authentic and relevant brand story is actually the foundation of branding. Who are you and why should anybody care? And that should be authentic to your core and you should weave it into everything that you're going to be doing, which is what I try to call story threading, all right? Because human beings are wired to listen to stories, okay? so. At, at, at any given moment, your brand should be telling us why we should be paying attention. But beyond that, um, necessity is another important element um, that should be used in your storytelling, which is the actual telling part. And I'm not talking about the merits of um, one from... You know, you you trying to paint a picture of how successful you've become. Um, I'm talking about weaving your story through every single thing that you do to interact with your audience. Okay. Like if you have been listening to my stuff and you would understand that I came from Zimbabwe where I had nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. And when I arrived in Australia, I knew no one. And what I then did, um, you know, for me to be where I'm, I am right now was a series of events that included me creating a website for a restaurant that I was working on. And I almost got fired for doing that. All right. So all those elements make me stand out and be unique and also give me authority and a voice to be able to speak to people. Because if somebody can come from Africa with no connections, no networks or no alumni and actually make a big um, dent in the Australian market, then you know, you too can be, do and have um, a business that's profitable, enjoyable. And my whole story is around that sort of theme, um, which, you know, is that narrative because that's authentic and that's authentic to my story. So your brand story must actually thread through everything that you do. 
um i think growing up we you would have um or even now you know you've watched superman you've watched all the other brands out there and you know superman because you can recognize the big s um that's on the chest so for you to pick a big red s on the chest of your brand you actually need to thread this story through every piece of brand communication every behavior every interaction every tweet anything that you're going to be con- connecting with your audience because people need seven to 13 or 15 touch points before they can actually start paying attention to whatever it is that you're doing there so to create a consistent and unifying premise for people to buy into all right you want people to be able to buy into your story okay so that's from your website to your sales calls to your podcast your annual reports if you have to whatever ads you put out there the communication you have with your employees social media especially and if you got products that go out there every label copy um on your way to your customer really 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 uh should be telling us a little bit about what you value and why we should continuously patronize your business because Everything that you put out there that has your name on it is an opportunity for your brand to build its story with the audience and then to connect your audience to the story. That is what people buy into. All right. That's why you see that sometimes when you put um, information out there or when you put um, a product out there, it takes a while because each and every iteration that we are putting out to the marketplace there is a way to connect with our audience and we have to build upon that step by step so each and every one of these building blocks has to be put in um in a right and precise order and that's why you constantly have to be optimizing them all right so like i said everything is an opportunity for you to actually build this brand and to have your story repeated in a way that it actually makes sense to the audience you're trying to reach out to. And that's the reason why I call this story threading, okay? Because nothing is too small or too unimportant to use in your brand story as long as it's authentic and it's yours and it actually resonates um, with who you are and who you've become and also showing us where you are headed towards because your story will be there to justify the failures of your audience and actually create and encourage their dreams all right because they are probably going through stuff in life and if you haven't gone through any of that then who are you to document who are you to be standing in front of them and trying to tell them how to live their life and while you're doing that um you do then happen to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable so nothing is too small and nothing is not important enough to be used in your brand story and like i keep referring to it as story threading and um you can also maybe call it powerful branding and a great way to think about this is uh this is painter um chuck 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 close chuck close and it's um he created this famous painting so close painted a series of individual small abstract shapes and each acting on its own but ultimately was contributing to the whole it's like the little pixels that formulate a whole picture because if you uh blow up a picture you will notice that it is all created by little squares all right that um shape the whole big picture and then when you actually step back or if you zoom out from a distance each shape works with all the others to form a single complete image okay and and this is brilliant when you're building a house you just don't have one big wall no you have brick by brick by brick and soon you have a wall all right and however if some of the shapes didn't don't work or if some of the bricks are not um you know feeding to your you know sculpture or whatever it is that you're creating that image or that wall would not be 
consistent and it will be a total mess and probably won't be um, nice to look at. So you want to make sure that when you're threading your story, everything sits and, and, and you know, corresponds and is authentic. And the reason why it's so good, um, you know, to always be telling the truth and not trying to be what you're not is you don't ever have to... Um, you know, have to remember anything because you're just telling your story. All right. So just make sure you're doing that throughout the work. And also the internet is written in stone. So if you're going to add a little bit of spice to your content there, just to make yourself look good, um, guess what? You know, it just tarnishes your image and it takes a while to build trust. And if you're not going to be able to uh, do it consistently, then guess what? A lot of people are just going to um, not trust you at all. Okay. So once you're building a consistent brand, you actually become powerful because all that people want is your side of the story. And people just want to hear how you uh, went through certain uh, activities, you know, in order for you to be doing, have what you now have and why they should follow you or listen to whatever it is that you're saying, because to be successful at, um, you know, that story threading that I was t telling you about, you need to understand that each and every piece of your brand's communication and any interaction has its own job to do. And the way to do it most effectively, um, is by uh, being honest, you know, and it doesn't prelude it from, um, you know, being its own separate entity, okay? Each and every aspect of your branding should maybe, if you take it apart and it stands apart, it should, people should actually be able to recognize, um, you know, who, who that came from or who that story represents. So this is why consistency, uh, when you're threading your story together, each different piece coming under the brand story, your audience is then funneled down to a precise brand path that you want them to take. Okay. So if you're going to use your brand story as part of your customer journey, you want to make sure that it's leading them towards some sort of promise and whatever your brand, um, a call to action that you want them to take. Because if you take any detours or any alternate routes, it it dilutes the consistency that you've been building on your brand, okay? And eventually, if you're consistently doing it and um, making sure that people are listening to you and, you know, they're having the same narrative, that consistency builds, build, builds on itself. And, you know, the effort that you make, you know, or whatever money that you spend will actually start paying you back in dividends. Even if it's just small efforts, you actually get a bigger benefit in the end. But I'll tell you something. We work with a lot of coaches, consultants, and small business owners, and many brands don't do this. Many brands go to a lot of trouble and expense to develop their story only to use it in some instances and leave it on the side of the road um, and just go in and start selling, selling, selling without actually weaving their story into everything that they're doing, you know, brands or coaches and consultants that do this, you know, they go in and pay maybe a very expensive agency and um, then they choose whatever favorite channels that they want to work on and then ignore what they don't find exciting. But that's what our audience is actually gravitating towards. And they actually don't discipline themselves to you know, consistently be telling that story because if you've got a, con a consistent story, you attract, you know, the best uh, partners, you attract the best clients, you also attract the best stuff to work for you. So you want to avoid this trap uh, for your brand and just consistently be telling your story because that's the only thing that differentiates you into, you know, a, a marketplace of me too people out there. All right. Because all the things that we're we're constantly teaching our audience are the same. But the only difference is how we help our customers throw rocks at their enemies. And that is 
through our life stories and what we have experienced and how we can safely say, hey, I have gone through this and that's the reason why I'm sitting here and trying to tell you how to get things done, all right? So you don't have to sacrifice your income to do what you love. You can have both. And, um, you know, by you just say, telling your story and weaving it into your brand, it makes it super easy for you to have something to say all the time because you've had all this experience with your life, you know? Just like I have stories of how I was born in a small town in Africa and, and how I was growing up there and how life was pretty tough. And if somebody comes to me and is complaining about maybe something that would have happened to them, I can relate to them and also maybe shed light and say, hey, I was one of those hungry kids from Africa that you saw on a you know, a, a World Vision commercial. You know, we didn't have a lot of money and hope and couldn't amount to anything. But my life changed when a bright-eyed Australian teacher came to work at my school and she told me about Australia and the incredible opportunities that it had to offer. And then she taught me that there was a whole nother world outside of my small town. So she now became the anchor of what I now based my whole future upon. So you too can tell your story in that instance and show your audience or your clients that whatever they're going through, you have also been there and maybe done that. And once you, you're at that level, you become em empathetic, you know, you know, you become um, emotion, you know, emotionally intelligent and aware uh, according to what it is that they're going through. And when you thread your story um, you know, through don't miss out parts that you think are embarrassing because using your brand story for every brand interaction requires a little bit of creativity here and there, effort and so much leadership. All right. And it takes a lot of discipline and willingness to actually see the forest as well as the trees. And it means not only using, you know, the best parts, but to actually create some of the story that, um, you know, uh, you know, the lessons that your experience would have, um, you know, uh, made you realize. So a lot of uh, coaches and consultants not only look at the obvious, uh, you know, in their brand story, so storytelling opportunity, you know, they, they, they take what they think is low hanging fruit in their advertising and in their social media and maybe just spice it up on their website. I don't want you to be like that. You know, you don't forget the less obvious opportunities. Like maybe even how you helped somebody at a shop or how you helped someone at, um, you know, or how somebody helped you and how that taught you some sort of a lesson and don't just relegate um, you know, telling your story to just your website and your social media, you know, there's places like your email signature, your annual reports in your presentation, in your podcast, instruction manuals, in welcome letters, every communication as a whole. Okay. You know, when you start telling your story like that, it starts to re re resonate and you need to use it as, um, you know, a tool to actually differentiate yourself in the marketplace. Now, importantly, a lot of um, people that are doing it well in the marketplace there, um, you know, when they do have an opportunity to start telling their story, they use it in ways that are remarkable. All right. So you want to look beyond the obvious and make everything a winning opportunity. Now, as I sort of mentioned previously, Story threading takes a lot of creativity and you got to put in the effort to constantly be telling that story. And it takes using all things that you already use in a more brand effective way. Let everything that you touch be a representative of who you are out there. You know, and I know it's not easy, but you can, it takes a different level of thinking to actually start seeing opportunities where you can tell your story, um, you know, for as long as, as, as you can, you know, if anything, you need to start, um, putting a lot of content out there because people are coming to the internet to get information. 
And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, then guess what? They get to know you, like you, and trust you. And we all know that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Because almost 92% of people are coming um, to the internet for that, um, you know, purpose alone. And when they then buy from you, you no longer have to keep convincing people that you are the best person because they can tell it from your stories and your brand rep representation that you have an understanding of what it is that they are hoping to achieve. So I'm hoping you got a bit from this podcast today. Don't be shy to put your story out there optimize it through your branding and make sure that you constantly are um, utilizing your experience and your life story as a means to get in touch with your audience. And if that's something that you are interested in doing, which is obviously, you know, gaining more trust within your um, audience there, just reach out or subscribe to this podcast so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the live long digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.